Hi guys, in this video, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna go through how I made Pliny the Pastel Unicorn. Smaller doll, uh, so I'll go through everything that I used, um, and including the armature, the head, and everything like that. So this little one will be up for grabs in my shop. My patrons have early access, so if they haven't purchased her, then you can find her in my shop at creaturesofnat.com. Uh, so if you want to know how I made her, then um, keep watching. Alright, so I'm starting off with a resin cast of a little donkey type face that I sculpted. Uh, I like my unicorns a little donkey looking, I think they're a bit cuter. Um, but I'll probably do a horse one one day, or a horse looking one. Uh, so I'm just painting all of the areas that are going to be visible uh, once I have applied the fur to the face. So I'm using a kind of a pastel pink because I wanted the skin to be a pastel pink colour because uh, it's going to be a white, um, a white doll. So I'm using a brand called uh, Derivian Matisse. Uh, it's a nice pretty good water based uh, acrylic paint uh, nothing special it comes pretty cheap you can also get more expensive versions but they're in more of the high-end art type of um, paints but this is just like a cheap sort of um, a cheaper paint uh, because I'm not painting on canvas uh, so anyway I primed my piece before I actually paint anything just so the paint adheres to the resin because resin can be quite slippery and the paint can actually come off when you scratch it or something like that um, so I use a, it's actually a canvas primer, uh, and I have a video going into detail about it on my channel if you're interested. Moving on to the eyes, so I'm painting these eyes uh, rather than using glass eyes, and I'm using a paint by the brand Jacquard, it's the Lumiere paint, and it's got a nice metallic uh, colour to it, so it gives a little bit of sparkle in the um, unicorn's eyes. And I'm also painting in the pupils and I'm using the paint by Chromacryl and I just sort of use a dry brush technique to paint in the pupils. That means not having a lot of paint on your brush and sort of dabbing it um, so it fades. So the horn that I'm sculpting, I'm using a like an air dry clay that's quite soft to touch um, and I'm just swirling it around into a little... Um, and a horn, I guess, and then I'm carving out uh, the piece, uh, the little details using a um, pin tool, and then I can apply the horn onto the head of the um, of the resin. Uh, so this will need to dry overnight. Um, it gets harder over a few days, but it is again quite soft. Um, it's not like polymer clay where it's rock hard. This is more of a soft sort of clay. Uh, moving on to the fur, so I'm using a, a white faux fur for the body and I'm going to be adding the little pastel accents like the mane and the tail. So I've just drawn out all of the body pieces that I need to cut out using um, a pattern that I made. I have a pattern video over on my Patreon if you want to know how I make my body patterns. So I don't have much of this pastel uh, fabric air left, so I can only do little bits and pieces, but I thought a unicorn would be quite good. So I'm doing a longer tail, uh, so I'm, I have this piece ready cut out. I'll have to hand sew this piece because it's quite small. Um, it is a small doll, uh, rather than hand sew, uh, rather, rather than using a machine. And the white fur, this is a little look at what it looks like, uh, and you can see the patterns that I have drawn. I can cut it out. I prefer to use a small pair of scissors uh, so I can feed the blades in between the pile and I can just cut the backing. Um, but you can use anything you like. You can use bigger scissors. Um, I just find it cuts the backing a bit um, easier when I'm using small scissors. Uh, so once all of this is cut out, I can start pinning everything together and you can get yourself a, a box of pins really, really cheap at your local craft store or online for this matter. You can find it anywhere. Um, and yes, I pin it uh, first side together because uh, I'm going to be sewing some of this on the sewing machine. Because this is a, a smaller doll, I have to leave the openings a little bit bigger so I can turn the fabric inside uh, on itself. Um, but if you're hand sewing, you can sew it um, backing side together. You don't need to flip it the right way around. But there'll be quite a bit of hand sewing on on this doll because of the size of it and the holes that I'm going to be leaving um, from sewing on the sewing machine. So I, I, my sewing machine's not that great, <laughs> so you don't need a fantastic sewing machine, but I do hope to upgrade it 
soon. Uh, and this is what a little look, uh, what it looks like once I've sewn all of the bits up. You can see I've left the back end open and I've also left the neck area open because it's quite a narrow um, little space that I need to be able to push the fabric through. When you're pushing the fabric through, I'd recommend using a blunt um, wooden tool over a um, a metallic uh, a metal tool because the metal tool has a big chance of ripping a hole in your fabric and you'll have to hand sew the hole up um, and yeah I just have a clay tool that's pretty blunt at the end that I can help push the little um, fabric pieces through so that's a little look at what it looks like once it is um, the right side round so a bit fluffy once I've done that, I can um, make the armature. I have an armature tutorial in my shop at creaturesofnet.com if you want to know how I make a metal armature. Um, I also have a ball and socket armature video coming up on my Patreon as well. So I'm sewing in the main um, on that open end of the neck. <clears throat> uh, it's just a small mane, but luckily this fabric is quite a bit longer than um, the pile that on the white fabric. I'm also going to be trimming that white fabric down quite closely to the backing as well. So once that's sewn up, I can attach the head to the neck and I use a tacky fabric glue to attach it. Um, I get mine from a local store called Spotlight and you can get it from any craft store. You can find fabric glue anywhere. So once that's adhered a little bit, I can add the stuffing and then I can start sewing everything up. So I'm just giving the, the body a little bit of a trim so all of the fabric sits a bit nicer when I um, put it together <clears throat> and sew it up and attach all of the pieces. So I'm using a ladder stitch to sew up all of the open ends of the body. Um, I also have a ladder stitch video on my channel if you don't know how to do one. I uh, basically uh, makes a seamless um, close which is really good for art dolls and other fabrics um, so I always get a good quality thread as well because it always makes a difference when um, you're sewing and again going in with that same tacky fabric glue I just put a little bit in um, you don't want to go overboard with the glue because sometimes it can leak through uh, especially if you have fabrics that stain and clump together so just be mindful of that so once it's all sewn up, this is what we have. Needs a bit of a trim um, and all of some fur attached to the face. So here's what she looks like after I've given her a good trim. Uh, I left the, the ends a little bit longer just for um, a little different look. Um, but yeah, moving on to painting the horn. So I wanted to do like a pastel blotch horn. So I took some colors out of the mane and the tail. Uh, I just did a pastel purple, pastel blue, and a pastel pink. And I left some of the horn a bit white as well. And I just sort of watered it down a little bit and applied some blotches onto it. Um, not anything I've done before, but it was either that or silver. And I've done silver before, so um, I went for something a bit different. And then once that's done, I apply some fur to the face and give it a bit of a trim and this is what it looks like. So one of my patrons snapped this little one up. Uh, so if you want early access to any of my work, you can join my Patreon for as little as $2 and you get access before it gets released to the public. Thank you to my patrons for supporting me. I really do appreciate it. Uh, you can get a whole heap of different perks uh, like the one I just mentioned. You can also check me out on Instagram and Facebook at Creatures of Net uh, and my shop at CreaturesOfNet.com. And I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.